Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Friday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you can, right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me as my Bible sits open to the book of Titus. Titus in chapter 3, I'll begin to read at verse 3 here momentarily. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. I hope that you have I hope that you have come to see, if you know Christ as Savior, come to see the value of of communicating the gospel by using gospel tracts. I want to encourage you to get some from us. We'll send you some absolutely free of charge. By the way, this is the 80th year for this ministry, Bible Tracts Incorporated, to be publishing gospel tracts with great, clear gospel messages. We publish them and give them away free of charge. We pay the shipping all over the world. And obviously we're able to do that because God's people say, hey, we want to be a part of getting the gospel to the world. And I want you to get some tracts from us. I'll be talking about a tract here in a moment entitled, Do You Know For Sure? But I want to set up our Bible study this way. Anytime any person gets a gift, an unexpected gift, it's a good day, no matter whether the gift is large or small. Sometimes, though, the gift can really be significant. Not too awful long ago, I heard about a pastor who always went to serve in very small, struggling churches. Often the pastor would have to work a secular job to feed his family until the church grew, and every church he touched did grow. Well, in the process of all this, the pastor and his wife never were able to put any money away for their retirement. At most, they had about $10,000 in their bank account. But then one day, it came. A check came for, listen now, a check came for $100,000. It was a personal gift. They didn't have to pay tax on it or anything. It was a gift for the pastor and his wife directed to be directed towards their retirement. And on top of it all, the check came from Mr. Anonymous, they don't know to this day who sent that check. Now, friend, somebody thought an awful lot of that pastor and his wife, didn't they? Can you begin to imagine the kinds of things that pastor and his family would have said to the donor if they just knew who it was? The verses before us today talk about an even greater gift than a gift of $100,000. Out of God's kindness and love for us, he's given to us something that's so unique it has eternal consequences. Get your Bible, join me please, Titus chapter three. While you're getting your Bible open, also get something on which you can jot some notes, would you please? Here, here's another reason why I want you to have that note paper handy. At the end of this broadcast, my announcer is gonna come back on and give you three ways by which you can contact us. If you'll do that, give us your name and mailing address. We'll send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. One of them is this one entitled, Do You Know For Sure? Now, this track is formatted different than the rest. It's about four inches long, about two, almost three inches tall. It's a small booklet, but don't let that steer you away from this track. This track has been used mightily. People that have been using it love this track. This track is done in a way that really meets the uh, the way that people read in the present world here, at least in the United States. It gives short snippet statements. The clear verses of the scripture are here. Do you know for sure? And the question relates to, do you know for sure you're going to go to heaven? Do you know you're for sure your sins have been washed away and eternal life is your possession? Do you know for sure that Jesus is your savior? Friend, this gospel track is a powerful, powerful tool. People have already been coming to Christ through this particular track. Please, please, 
get these tracks from us. If you can't wait to the end of the program, go to our website, please. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. The word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. And friend, if you're interested in getting the gospel around the world, consider helping us do that. Since we give our product away, eventually we need to pay the bills of printing and shipping and so on. We're just rejoicing of all the people that do help us accomplish that goal. Well, if your Bible's open to the book of Titus chapter 3, I begin reading at verse 3. Here's what the Bible says. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts, and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But... After that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Stop, please, right there. Now, chapter 3 of Titus opens with a call to believers to live their lives before a lost world in a manner that is totally different from the unsaved people. Now, how in the world can a child of God go through their day-to-day life being gentle and meek to lost people who many times are trying to take advantage of them? The answer to how we can do that is found here in verses 3 through 7. We have, believers have been fundamentally changed by the kindness, love, and grace of God. We've been saved by God's grace. I called verse 3 by this title. It describes the depravity that is in me. The depravity that is in me. And verse 3 describes all of us, either past tense or present tense. The one who was receiving this letter when it was first written was Titus. He was a believer. So all the things spoken here about in verse 3 were part of the, his past life, past tense for him. And they're true in the past tense for anybody who's received Christ as Savior. But verse 3 opens with these words, for or because we ourselves also were once foolish. Believers are supposed to understand sinners because we once were just like them. We understand sinners. We understand them quite well, thank you very much. But now come to verse 4. My outline title for verse 4 is this, the devotion to me. I move from verse 3, the depravity in me, to the devotion to me. Now, why do I live a totally different life now than what's described there in verse 3? Well, the reason is that God loves me and devoted himself to save my soul. Verse 4 opens with these words, but after, but after, something happened that transformed my life from the inside out. And what happened is that God was kind to me. God loved me. And verse 5 says, God in mercy saved me. I have to bring up here Romans 5, verse 8, because it fits so nicely right here. God commended or God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were still in our sin, Christ died for us. Now, while you and I were living in a Titus 3, 3 life pattern, God was practicing a Titus 3, 4 devotion to us. God was kind. He showed kindness to us. How did God display his kindness? Well, verse 4 says that God, our Savior, appeared. Rather than appearing as a mighty angel with a flaming sword, God sent that to earth one time with Adam and Eve, you remember. And rather than God appearing, throwing flaming coals of fire from the sky as he did to Sodom and Gomorrah, and rather than appearing with another worldwide flood to judge sinners due to the way people were living in verse 3, God himself came to earth as a baby. He came to live our life, experience our world as a, as a real, complete human being. But then he died an awful, murderous death. His death, he died our death so that we can be saved from our sinful selves and from the sentence of eternal death on our lives. We're condemned sinners. 
The word kindness basically means generosity. The word love, you know what that word means. But verse 4 says that God displayed his generosity and love for us while we were his enemies, while we were living a Titus 3, 3 lifestyle. Verse 5 has got to be one of the most well-known verses in the Bible. I'm going to deal with it more fully uh, and the ideas that are there on Monday's broadcast. But for right now, let me focus here on this simple phrase found in verse 5. The phrase is this, according to his, God's, according to God's mercy, he saved us. In my opening to the broadcast, I told how that that pastor had received a $100,000 gift. It was a great gift, but it came due to the faithful, godly life practice of that pastor and his wife. It was a tremendous gift, but a gift that they had, in essence, lived a life pattern that they deserved it. Here, God gives the ugly, depraved sinner a gift a gift with eternal consequences. He gives it out of mercy, out of holding back what we as wicked sinners are called to receive. Instead, God generously, lovingly, and in great mercy offers us his son to save us from our stink and our sinfulness. Has God become your savior, my friend? He's described that way in verse 4. Verse 4 reads, But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior towards man, appeared. He came to be a Savior, but his saving work only becomes legitimate, only becomes practical to you and I when we, by faith, respond to his call to salvation. When we, by faith, turn from our sin and say, that's taking me to hell. That's taking me to eternal destruction. I don't want to go there. I want to open my heart to the love and grace and mercy and gentleness and kindness of Almighty God. I want to receive his son as my savior from sin. For that to happen, my friend, you must know that you need a savior. Why you need a savior. The reason you and I need a savior is found in verse three. If you don't own, personally own verse 3, then you don't need the Savior of verse 4. But if you will own verse 3 and all its ugliness, then you're going to see why you don't deserve verse 4. You're only going to get verse 4 because God loves you. You're only going to get verse 4 because God is merciful to you. It's not that God has overlooked and kind of blinded his eye to your sin. No, He sent his son to pay your sin debt. He paid your sin debt. He did that for you. And now by his grace, he extends to you a pardon from your sin because the sin debt can be paid. It can be paid because Jesus shed his blood at Calvary's cross. He was buried, but he arose again to prove he can give you eternal life. And when he says to you, I will wash all your sins away, He proved he can do that by conquering death. Friend, receive Christ as your Savior today. He's the only Savior from sin there is. Make Christ your Savior. Get those tracks from us. Let's tell others about the Savior as well. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.